On this episode of Golden Key Design, we're going to take all of this and turn it into this. Stay tuned to see how we did it. So one of my first big projects was actually building my sister a reclaimed headboard with some industrial lights, similar to the one you'll see today. And when she was moving out of her apartment, the new tenant had seen the headboard and really wanted one. So my sister gave her my number and she reached out and we got to building. Bianca and I went through all the boards and picked out what we thought was the best pattern. Then we numbered them to make sure we could keep them in the right order. I think the best way to mount this headboard would be to use a French cleat on the wall. However, the walls in this apartment are made of concrete, and so instead we're going to be using these 2x4s which will prop the headboard up off the floor, and then we'll choose some command strips to make sure it stays up against the wall. And this also keeps it renter friendly so you can just take it with you whenever you leave without any damage to the wall. And off camera I painted some 1x2 trim with black spray paint, and we're just going to be installing this around the perimeter of the headboard. And this way we have a positive stop to measure up against when we install the wood on the inside of the headboard. And we decided to use mitered corners for this, but it does take a little bit more time to measure as it needs to be a little bit more accurate. But if you don't want to do that, you can also use butt joints and I think it would also look really nice too. And I'm making the back of the trim flush with the back of the headboard, and therefore the front of it is going to be extending about an inch above the surface, and therefore the wood has something to sit inside, and it'll be a nice board to cover up the edges of the wood. And for reference, I'm building this for a queen size bed, and it's 6 feet by 3 feet. Alright, so now we're starting to put the wood on the headboard, and with each row we're going to have a little bit of extra length. So in this case, in this third row that we're just doing, this board's a little bit long. But in order to measure where to cut it so that it fits, it's a little bit hard to do this on a bit of an angle. And so we want to keep this side. So what we're going to end up doing is flipping it around and then flipping it upside down. This is a lot easier to mark. Pushing it up against the board there. And then you can easily measure it here and the board's nice and flat so you get an accurate measurement. And that way it's a lot easier. Then you can take your speed square and extend that line until it's easier to cut on the miter saw. So now I'll go and cut it. Perfect fit. It's a little bit snug, but you want it, you know, you'd rather have it a little bit snug than a little bit loose. We're still gonna add glue and nails to this, but we're just kind of cutting everything first before we permanently attach everything. All right, so now we got all the boards laid and now we just have about an inch of um, leftover here. And so we just gonna use our leftovers to rip them down on the table saw just so we get a nice little strip here. And we made sure to leave this at the bottom because you're not gonna see much of it, it'll probably be covered up by their pillows or their mattress or whatever. So we made sure to have a full board at the top so that you're definitely gonna see that. Here we have the hole for the light and here we have the hole for the switch. Um, and then I just took the board that we're using in this location, put it over top and then went underneath with a Sharpie and I marked both of the hole locations so now I will drill out a hole here so the electrical wire can go through. And then here I have to be careful I, and I'm gonna be uh, applying one of these switches. And I did a test run here. And so this is what it's going to look like on the front. So a nice rocker toggle switch. And it's a little bit tricky because you need to uh, take out a little bit of material off the back but you can't go all the way through. So you kind of have to be very careful and you know maybe go like an eighth to um, three eighths of an inch. And then once you're at that point, you can stick the switch through and screw on the front washer to hold it in place. It's a little scary because these boards are already all cut and ready to go and I don't have any leftovers, so I can't screw up. So hopefully I do it correctly. Let's do it. All right, so now we're cutting away a little bit of a cavity so that the switch can recess into the wood a little bit. Now I have this one and a half inch bit here, and it sucks because it's right on the edge of this wood. It just happened to line up that way, so I have to be very careful. I ended up clamping this down with some nice clamps, and I put it underneath a two by six so that you know there's no movement, and I have a nice, good, secure clamping pressure. So I'm gonna go nice and slow, get it started, and once it's started, I should be okay, but again, I can't go all the way through, so I have to stop almost about halfway through the wood.
It's a good idea to reassess as you make your way. So I'm in the wood now, so that's good. Now I just gotta be careful of my depth. All right, so now that we finished with this bit, recessing it, we're gonna come back with a three eight, actually this is half inch, a half inch bit so that the switch can poke through the material, uh, but not too much so that this black box can kind of be on the backside and apply pressure when we screw the washer on. And I am screwing from the backside, however I have it securely clamped to a two by six so I don't expect any blowout on the other side. Um, so that's why we're doing it this way. All right, so off camera, I just put the switch through. All you do is you put it through this side and then you use this washer here to screw it on. And I was just making sure that I had enough threads here to screw it and I did. So I could have potentially made the hole a little bit bigger to make more of the switch come through, but it ended up working just fine. I got it nice and secure. And now the switch works nicely. It's not wiggling or anything. And look at how clean that looks. You don't see any holes or anything here. So that looks really nice. Really happy with how that turned out and then we'll install it and then wire it up. All right, so now we are ready to start nailing the boards to the OSB. I did a test uh, just to see where the nails would go into the wood and I got 5 8 inch nails so that they would penetrate through the OSB but not out the back. So there's no, gonna be no issues there. This test worked just fine. And then we're gonna be also using some liquid nails. I think this is a bit overkill, but we'll just do it anyway since we have it here. But these boards are super light and the nails that were already cleaned into it should be more than enough, but that's just reassurance that nothing's ever gonna fall down. So let's get started. So I needed about half inch screws and I was on a bit of a time crunch and it was pretty late at night so instead of waiting for the next day to go buy some I just used my angle grinder and cut some 2 inch ones down to size. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And these will be used to install the lighting hardware and here I'm just installing some black pipe which you can find at your local big box store. And to make the lighting connections a bit more secure I found these Wago connectors on Amazon which I'll link in the description and they make splicing wires a lot easier. And I'm not going to get too much into the details of the electrical work because I'm not a licensed electrician by any means. However, I just connected the lights to the switches and then I connected both of those to one plug that you can plug directly into the wall. Alright, this is wired to the plug so we just plug it in and see if it works. Alright, so I just plugged it in and now we're going to be testing if the lights work. This is the first try so hopefully everything goes smoothly. And ideally both Switches trigger each light separately. They don't trigger each other or turn off each other. Ooh. Now the other one. Very nice. And these lights are really nice because they give off a nice glow and it shows all the textures in the wood as well. We decided to put the switches up here. Originally, I was thinking we could put them down here, but most likely you'll, you'll have your pillows and mattress and everything right here, and it might stack up. And you might hit your head on it occasionally, so we moved it up here. So you could still reach it while in bed, but it's also out of the way at the same time. And that's gonna wrap up this week's project. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something along the way. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. And I'll make sure to link all the products that I use and tools down in the description as well. I'm really proud of how the project turned out. I really think the rustic look of the wood with the industrial lights and the Edison bulbs and the rocker switches all surrounded by that black border, everything just goes really nicely together. And I think there's a lot of interest around this sort of design, so this is a great product to sell in your area if you want to make some money on the side, which I'll probably be doing in my area. So if you're local to the Chicago or Northern Illinois area, please let me know and shoot me a 
DM if you're interested. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like as it really helps me out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as we post a new DIY video every single Saturday. So get subscribed and stay tuned for next week. And lastly, Bianca and I ended up delivering the headboard and the client was extremely happy. Her room was still being set up so I didn't get a final shot, but still really proud of this one. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week. Here we have the hole for the light where the electrical wire will, wire will go for the hole. Here we have the hole for the light where the electrical wire will, wire will go for. I can't speak.